Hi, I'm Chris Naniga, the Director of Training Development at Swift Otter, and you're watching a free lesson from our BigCommerce Frontend Foundations training course, the most extensive and in-depth learning experience available to turn you into an expert on BigCommerce's default frontend framework. If you like what you see in this lesson, see below for the link to the full course. Now we're going to talk about how to make use of content images in your stencil theme. And by content images, I'm referring to image assets that are not part of your theme assets, but are part of your store content, uh, administered in your BigCommerce store in some way. So this covers everything from images that are attached to your various entities, like your products or your brands, uh, to any images that are uploaded as part of your web page or blog content, or in page builder widgets, and even images that are managed directly in the web dev storage that you are able to access access and manage with a web dev client. There's enough here to the use of content images that we're actually going to split this topic into two lessons. There's a whole set of handlebars helpers for dealing with content images, different helpers for different types of images. And a key difference with this type of image compared with static images is that content images are those that have already in some fashion been uploaded to your BigCommerce store. So they're available right from the get-go to be served with the CDN. That's different from what we saw with static images, which were, uh, which were part of our theme files. And we saw that in our local environment, those were served up with with, uh, with a relative URL from the actual local server, whereas in production, they were served from the BigCommerce CDN. Uh, we'll see in a moment that when we're talking about content images, even in our local environments, those are served from the BigCommerce CDN. And we're just gonna take a quick look at one of those to get a feel for the format of these image URLs and what can be done with them. Uh, so if we just go to any content image on my site, the, these images that are attached to my blog articles are a type of content image. I'm going to open this image in a new tab just so we can cleanly see the URL of this image. So even in my local environment, this is being served up from, uh, from a BigCommerce CDN URL. And uh, we have this, this format that's always involved with content images. There's a few different segments to this from my, uh, my store ID uh, to a size string. And this is uh, uh, one of the things that we're gonna be talking about, the, the way that you can dynamically resize content images using these URLs, uh, and then some kind of relative path to the content image. The, the rest of this path really depends on the type of content image it is and how we got a hold of it. This, uh, this query string parameter on the end uh, is just something that my local environment is automatically appending to this uh, just for cache busting to make sure uh, that this is being served up fresh rather than being cached by my browser. And just to visualize that a little better, here it is that that CDN image pattern is always the CDN domain followed by our store ID, followed by images slash stencil, then some kind of size string, and then some kind of relative path to the image. Now that size string that's included in the URL can be one of three different formats. So first of all, it can just be the hard-coded string original, which will, uh, which will serve up the image in its original resolution, however it was uploaded. Then we can also use uh, this second uh, format that we see here, some kind of number value followed by W. So that's constraining the width of the image or resizing the width of the image because it will also be, uh, also be scaled up if that happens to be higher than the original resolution. Uh, but this will uh, result in dynamic resizing at the CDN and the image you get served is sized to that uh, particular width. And that sizing is done maintaining the original image ratio, so the height will be also be resized accordingly. Then the third format we can use for that size segment is this final format, uh, which, which is two numerical values joined by an X. Of course, uh, that's, that's width by height. And so that will establish a, uh, a resizing constraint for both dimensions. Uh, again, the original aspect ratio will be maintained. So this basically establishes uh, a constraint for width and height, and uh, the image will be resized to whatever keeps, uh, whatever keeps both of those dimensions uh, within that maximum number that's given. So, uh, so that could, this, this uh, string that I have here, 300 by 100, could result in it being uh, resized to exactly 300 width, if that, uh, if that would result in a height that is under 100, or it could be uh, resized to exactly a 100 height, if that's what's needed to, to keep the width under 300. We can just play with our image URL here to demonstrate those different size patterns. I'm just gonna get rid of this 
query string parameter on our ostrich image URL here. Uh, but we see that what was already being served up was an, uh, an image URL with this 640 width constraint. So that's being resized to 640 pixels wide. I could replace this with original here. And we get the image served up with the original resolution. Or I could replace that size segment with, let's go really small and say 200 by 100. And we will get that resized according to those constraints. So we haven't even gotten into any handlebars, helpers, and how to include these images in our uh, theme yet. But we can see that we can, uh, we can actually play with these image URLs manually in our browser to kind of get a feel for how that resizing works. Now I misspoke a moment ago when I said that all content images are always served with these CDN URLs in your local environment. That's true for some types of content image where the, the URL itself is being provided as data in the stencil objects to your page. For some content images that are directly referenced with the helpers we're going to look at in this lesson, uh, we will see that the, the actual image URL that's output is a, a local host uh, image URL, even though the images are in fact being sourced from the, the big commerce CDN. And I'll show you what I mean here. And I apologize if this is a little difficult to read in my URL bar, but I'm basically just going to replace everything in the image URL we've been looking at, uh, replace the everything from the domain on through my store ID with my local host domain. So I'm gonna make sure to, to use HTTP here instead of HTTPS and then localhost port 3000, just like my, uh, just like all of the pages uh, on my stencil, stencil environment. I'm leaving everything else here the same, and I still get an image result even when using that, that local URL. So I could do that with any image that's being served up uh, by my CDN with this kind of pattern. Um, and so what we're getting here, this has to be still getting served by the, the big commerce CDN, because this is not an image that exists on my local environment on disk and obviously the dynamic resizing that we've done that's that's happening at the CDN so so the stencil server is proxying this uh, in some way from from the big commerce CDN and then serving it up through a local host URL but how do we get content images like this into our theme uh, to talk about that we need to first talk about the different kinds of content images because there's different helpers for different kinds and first we're going to talk about image manager images so here in my big commerce admin if i go to storefront i can visit the image manager and this panel shows any images that have been uploaded uh, in various content areas of the site any images that i that i upload when authoring content on my web pages or in my blog articles or in any uh, page builder widgets will end up being part of this same pool of images in the image manager and then i have this dedicated panel in my admin where I can directly manage them. I can I can just upload images directly to the image manager pool right from here. This is separate from uh, content images that are attached to my products or brands, for instance. Those images aren't going to show up in this pool, but uh, in those uh, content areas that I mentioned, those images will all end up being part of the same pool. So to reference uh, an image manager image, one of the one of the images in this pool in my theme, I just need to use the correct helper with the file name of an image that exists in the image manager. Uh, so here in my home page template, I have already put an example of this. So just right above our, our uh, custom home page content we've been authoring, my first example of an image up here is using this get image manager image helper. That's that's the helper that we want to use for pulling in any image manager images. We just give it a file name. So this ostrich JPEG, that is the file name of that file that has been uploaded, I think originally through a blog post and is part of that pool. Uh, if we just provide that without any additional parameters, then we should get the image served up at its original uh, resolution. But we can also provide these width a width parameter or width and height parameters, and that will that will uh, manipulate the actual CDN URL that is ultimately output uh, with those size strings like we have seen. Uh, so this should give me a, an image being output with a CDN URL with that 300 by 200 format to constrain both the width and the height. So here in my local environment, we see I've got these two different images uh, of different kinds, but the first one is my image manager image. So there's that same same ostrich image that's part of my blog post, uh, but it's being output a little bit bigger than the blog post uh, version is. And we see 
that uh, 300 by 200 segment uh, that's been put in there as the size as a result of those context uh, or, or helper parameters that I used. One quirk you might notice if you're uh, playing around with the same kind of images that I am is in this case when we use the image manager image helper to resolve this URL uh, we have a, a relative path that seems to be in this subdirectory image manager that's as opposed to this same image uh, that's that's attached to my blog post here in the case of my my actual blog post data that's being delivered in my stencil objects and the URL that got output for this image, we see that, the, that there seems to be this uploaded images subdirectory instead, even though, in fact, this is the same image in storage, the same image in my image manager pool, there are clearly different URL patterns uh, that Stencil resolves for, uh, for different contexts. Uh, but, but that's okay. We don't really need to concern ourselves with how those are being resolved. Uh, we, just, uh, we just use the right helpers and, and Stencil and the CDN take care of the right URL patterns. Now let's just see real quick what happens uh, if I if I change my my helper a little bit to pass in instead of both width and height parameters, just that width parameter, just constraining it to a width of 300. Uh, we should see that different size format. So now we get that 300 uh, W that format uh, of just specifying the width. The other type of content image we're going to discuss in this lesson is content images that are stored in your web dev storage. Uh, so with your big commerce store, you have you have access to web dev connection information uh, that you can use with any web dev client to directly uh, directly manage files in that storage. Here under settings, if you go to advanced settings and if you go into this uh, file access section that will give you the connection information that you need to hook up a web dev client like cyberduck for instance to be able to directly manage this storage so i'm i'm using cyberduck here i've got it connected to my store and i have access to a lot of different directories here and can manage the files uh, in this storage uh, as as if we needed to add to the confusion of the different uh, different directory paths we've seen related to our image manager images uh, those are actually in here they're under product images uploaded images we can actually see uh, all of those all of those different uh, images in our image manager pool here in WebDAV as well. Uh, but the helper that we're going to look at for accessing images from WebDAV uh, uh, is sourcing images from this content directory. So the content directory specifically, uh, we, can, we can directly reference any file names of images in there with the proper helper and, and uh, directly inject images that we've uploaded through WebDAV. That's what uh, this second image that I have here, this little samurai guy, I have used this other helper uh, right after our image manager uh, version, we have get content image. So that's the helper that we use uh, for, for injecting images from WebDAV. And like I said, it's specifically from that content subdirectory. So we just give it a path that's relative to that content subdirectory. And then everything else about this helper works the same way as the, the get image manager image helper. We can specify uh, width or width and height, just like we could with that one. And, and we get a uh, resolved URL to that storage. So this image here we can see uh, is formatted pretty much like the image manager version, but, uh, but has that content subpath to, to the image that I injected. You might note if you do a little searching that there's actually no direct instances of either of these helpers in the in the native cornerstone code. And that kind of makes sense because the kind of images that we've been dealing with uh, in these examples uh, that are just kind of ad hoc images we've we've uploaded to our to our image storage, uh, those aren't usually going to be referenced directly in our theme code. Usually we would be using those images in our content, in our web pages, in our blog articles and things like that. So it is kind of an odd case to be directly referencing content images uh, like this somewhere in your theme code itself. But there are possible use cases for this, and you can kind of uh, make this configurable if you combine this with theme settings uh, for whatever your needs are. So let's say that you want a, a particular content image in a in a particular part of your theme, and you want to make that uh, make that configurable. Uh, you could uh, apply a theme setting just for the string of of a, a relative file name that could then be administered by uh, by an admin user 
in your admin panel. So, so a user that could either upload their own image to WebDAV or use the image manager to upload a new image and then simply go and take that file name of the image that they've uploaded and enter it into the appropriate theme setting. If you uh, consume that theme setting into one of these, uh, the usage of one of these helpers, that's a way that you could, that you might kind of combine the, the purposes of your, your theme itself with content image storage like this. There unfortunately is no, uh, no field type you can use in the schema for your theme settings that would offer like some kind of sophisticated file picker to directly select images from your image manager or anything like that. But in a pinch, you can use these things in combination of just the, the direct file name references with your image storage uh, if you need to incorporate images like this into your theme. Uh, that's just uh, one portion of our content images topic because we also uh, need to cover the topic of images that are actually attached to your entities, images like product images and brand images. And there's enough to discuss there that we are actually going to split that into yet another lesson.